Madison's. She's going to share her story with you. I just want to thank you all for coming out today, for taking the time to be here and support the patients of Massachusetts who are being denied access to life-changing and, in some cases, life-saving medicine. I'm here today because I'm desperate to help my daughter. I am sad. I am scared. I am frustrated. My seven-year-old daughter, Haley, is a patient without access. She has a severe form of refractory epilepsy, and on any given day, she can have up to 100 seizures. Since her diagnosis, she failed. Teen anticonvulsant medications, two restrictive diet therapies, steroids, and she spent 14 days in a medically induced coma. Her own doctors called her out of options. And then in 2012, our hope was restored. Massachusetts voters overwhelmingly passed a medical marijuana law, and I have seen patients, kids, in other legal states have miracles on this medicine. And I hope to heal. But in the two years since that vote, my daughter has had 9,000 seizures. Haley suffers on a daily basis without consistent access to this medicine. Despite patients and voters pleading with this administration and officials to implement the medical marijuana program, the state has failed our voters and they failed Haley. They're allowing her life to be in danger every day. Patients and parents like me are told to be patient. Be patient. How much patience would you have if it were your child? Haley's life is in danger every day. But Haley's just one of the thousands of patients in Massachusetts who are floundering without access to cannabis medicine. And even when dispensaries open, if they ever actually get open, they'll only cater to the needs of the majority of patients. To expand the caregiver program so that patients with unique needs, patients like Haley, who need specific strains grown for them, get that access so they can have treatment tailored to their needs. And while officials might have the luxury of time to debate if and when and how to implement this program, my family doesn't have that luxury. I'm left holding my convulsing child every day, just trying to keep her alive long enough to see her get a chance to try the medicine that could be her miracle. I'm out of patience because my daughter is running out of time. So what can you do to help? Help Haley. Call the DPH. Write. Governor Patrick, your senator, your state rep, and take your support to the polls. There is still time to register to vote. Vote for the candidates who are going to listen to their voters instead of ignoring them. I can plead here all day, but in the end, it's not even my voice that matters. It's Haley who's being denied this opportunity, and Haley has something that she wants to say. I do not want seizures anymore, but I want medicine that can take them away. Please don't let my daughter die waiting for medicine. EMF Radio Now. Hal Paley. That's right, Young Jerks. Yeah, welcome to this week's show. That was uh, Jill, a mom at the DPH, unacceptable protest out front of the DPH. You know, that that brought tears to my eyes when I saw her there giving that that speech, and and, and the did crowd's again, response, you know? the audience, uh, the activists there when they started. Save Haley. Save Haley. Uh, it, it faded out there. You didn't quite hear the whole end of that video, but that's what you heard. And uh, that video does cut sh- very short, but that's what you heard. People uh, were touched. This, y- this young girl stood up, and she said they're denying her medicine. And she's having seizures. Not the only young child there. Um, there was also uh, the uh, Cindy. Um, actually, am I saying that? Nah, Jill. Jill is the one we just heard from. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I think I said Cindy. I'm not sure, actually. No, no, you were right. I was right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there was also Cindy, uh, another mom who spoke with her husband uh, for their daughter. Yep. Several children there speaking out for medical marijuana at this DPH protest. And that's what we're here to discuss today on The Young Jerks. We do this every Saturday. A lot of support, a lot of listeners uh, just this week on the social media, on the Facebook, Frank, huh? It's crazy. I mean, it, it, you know, and that's, you know, in part thanks to everybody that came out and, you know, made the events, uh, you know, 
on Monday happened, or rather Tuesday happened, you know, for everyone to come out and, and, and be in support of medical and be in support of the kids and, and just patients being able to get access to their medicine, you know. So it was a huge week um, just for, for everybody involved in the community and especially, you know, um, it's super cool for us to be able to get all that love out there too at yeah. the same time. Yeah, definitely. And we have some uh, people in the studio today too. We should uh, introduce everybody here. We got a phone call as well. Oh, uh, Why don't we see who's on the line right now? Hi, are you listening to the show right now? Hello? Are you on the line? Hello? Can you hear us? Oh, Osborne, I am Haley's mom, and I spoke at the Unacceptable Rally. Wow. Thank you so much, Jill, for Thank coming. you, How Jill, for you? calling in. No problem. I'm glad to be here. Tell us about uh, why you decided to, to come out at this, at this juncture at DPH. For people um, that well, this wasn't our first venture into um, publicizing our story. We had a, a Boston Globe story published about nine months ago or so. Um, we had really hoped at that point that we might pressure this administration to maybe take some steps or, you know, at least find someone who could help us. It was really a cry for help at that point. So we've spent almost another whole year in kind of crisis mode already. And has this governor responded at all, especially since this rally? No, you- other than the generic statements that they give every time somebody holds a press conference or every time somebody holds a demonstration where they tell us to be patient, where they tell us that they're trying to create a safe and effective program, you know, where they make excuses, and it's just not okay anymore. Absolutely. And um, have you heard from any of these candidates? I mean, we've been trying to ask some of these candidates. Evan Felchuk seems like he's the best one. Have you heard anything from them in regards to this as well i haven't i had posted on his facebook page and sent his um his campaign an email inviting them to join us at the protest and i hadn't gotten any response so while he says he's on board people can say anything they want but i need to see demonstration of action first sure um frank you have something too yeah no for sure i mean especially when it's you know your life that you wake up to every single you know day that you don't want just platitudes, right? Platitudes. You you want someone to actually show some some direct action in order to be able to benefit your cause. So, but my question: Have you tried to meet like at all, like on a personal level, with the governor? Like, has there anybody had been any outreach, like to actually have sit and have a conversation and say, "Listen, this is the way that I have to like I mean, live every single day." I mean, we during the call in campaign. We, I have sent emails. I've regular regularly reached out to these people and. Quite frankly, they don't respond. They don't care. Yeah, they don't. It's 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 just they just keep pushing us off with the same stupid response for two plus years now. It's uh, it's you know when I say two plus years, it's been even before we passed this medical law. They always hated it. Like you know, it's the same same thing. Nothing's changed up there. No matter how many times we vote yes for marijuana reform in the state, they just continue to act like. Your child doesn't really exist. It doesn't really matter that you can be patient. I, I loved your speech, Jill. I, I, thank you for calling in today, and thank you for that speech. That was an amazing speech. How did thank you me. and Haley feel when you gave the speech? Because I know you must have had a lot of nerves doing that, being put in that situation, and then to hear the crowd response where everyone's saying, save Haley, save Haley. How did that make you both feel? Um, You know, it feels like we have a village. It feels like we have a support network, and it's been a long time um, building that. So it's a a really incredible feeling now. Um, I was nervous. I'm not a public speaker. Uh, I'm just a mom. I am just trying to save my daughter. Um, And I choked up in my first line. The instant I said the word life-saving, I started crying because I really do believe that this is what we need to save my daughter's life before it's too late. And that was something that you know I I, I have a, a little boy and and that's something that I, that I totally resonated with and connected with and while you were speaking you know I I just I got really emotional too just listening to you and, and like empathizing with the struggle you know that you're going through and 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 knowing that there's something that could actually you know work to alleviate Haley's situation and and not being able to safely access it. I mean, I just, I was right there with you and it was so, you know, moving and like so strong on your part, you know, to, to come out. And, Thank you. And, I don't feel strong, but for I sure. I mean, like I'm I getting through each day. I, I felt, I best. felt strength, you know, coming from you, you know, to be out there and, and, and to fight for your little girl, you know, uh, me too. Was, Me too. Me too. I, I mean, I was, I was just, I was, I was right there with you and, 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 and we got to like, 
we got to make this happen for you and, and for everyone else out there that is suffering from that. We have another call, too. I think uh, someone might want to weigh in. Uh, are you? Who's calling? Hello. Hello, caller. No. No question for Jill. Okay, I think we lost that call. Jill, you're still there, right? I am. Perfect. Sorry about that. If anyone wants to call in and you have uh, questions for any of us or Jill, uh, 617-500-7100. Uh, we have Jill. She's a mom. You just heard that emotional video from the, you know, her speech uh, this last Tuesday at the unacceptable rally, rally at the DPH that was covered a lot, you know, got a lot of good attention. Channel 7 had you on there, Jill. Uh, Channel 25, Channel 22 out in Springfield. A lot of coverage in print media as well. The Metro, Dig Boston. You guys really did it this week. What What do you think might happen from here? Do you have hope that uh, this will continue with protests? Or do you think something... What are you hoping to see from here? Um, I don't know. I don't... I don't see them taking any action that gets us access now. I think that they're perfectly happy saying, you know, dispensaries are are in the final inspection phase. They feel like it's progress. There's just no urgency to the process. And I don't think that they recognize how urgent the matter really is. I know. And and I I get frustrated at times, I have to admit, recently where I'm reaching out to some of these major radio hosts who some of them have had me on their shows in the past, and they're not interested in this. They're not interested in having you on. I don't get it, major media in Boston. Shame on you. I'm, I'm serious. That's how far I am today, both on the uh, campaign for what we're going to talk about later on Evan Felchuk, but on this medical marijuana. If you're not covering Joe right now, if you're not having her on your show, you're not, you, you're, like, seriously, I will never listen to your show again. Like, that's where we're at. Like, this child needs medicine. And because it's and because it's marijuana, then it's this it's it's this taboo thing, right? Where like, oh well, uh, this isn't something we can support. We got another caller. Hello, caller. Hi, this is uh, Cynthia Gedick. I was calling in. Um, I was at the unacceptable rally. Oh, hi, Cindy. Have you been listening? I have been. Jill's on there right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we have yep. both moms. You're another mom. Yep. So, what do you want to? Uh, do you have a question, or do you want to weigh in on your experience as well? Where do you want to go with this? Um, I wanted to weigh in as well. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's hear it. Well, um, well, my issue right now is that we're just finding out um, some more details about um, my daughter, Rebecca. She's, um, she's having some, some difficulties that we weren't aware of as far as her condition goes. Um, her seizures from now, from what we understand, she's having several different kinds of seizures, and they're happening um, two, three, four times a day now. And what we thought she was on a six-month, um, you know, <laughs> seizure-free time mode right now, she's not. And I'm getting a little more desperate with every, you know, minute that ticks past. We've only been in this for a year now. So um, I'm one of those moms. I'm going to get involved as much as I can. And I'm, I'm really, we really have to start standing up and making sure that uh, we get this access immediately. So, um that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we. Um, I. It's. It's. This is such a brutal subject to cover. You know, for both. You know, for us. Even we. we it's so upsetting that you guys don't get medicine, and you, you tell your story, and still nothing happens. It's. It just. It's horrifying. It is. It is. The inaction. And, just you know, when the um the neurologist telling you to um you know consider you know, the possibility of um. You know, SUDEP is what it's called, a sudden unexpected death in epilepsy patients. That was on her last um, real bad seizure, which lasted for about four hours. She had a cluster of seizures. Um, and we're looking at right now, There's, a, it looks like according to the activity that she's been having, that it's going to happen again. And, yeah, we're just really scared. So I need to know, you know, we need to give it a chance to find out if, you know, this medication the um the you know the cannabis is going to work for her and we're de- we're I'm getting desperate now <laughs> I don't want to see another one happen and I don't know we just moved here in November so I'm not really sure you know how to like I said we're just brand new to this and we came from California where it was legal so um we're having some missteps in in the whole process of what we should be doing um but do you ever think about that? Do you ever think about just going back to California or going to Colorado or just going somewhere else where this medicine is available? 
we we are on the waiting list for that. Um, yes, my husband works for the government right now, so we're stuck here for another six months at least. But um, we're liking where we are, and you know, there's and regardless of what we're going to do, they still need access. Well, for sure, Haley for sure, still needs for sure. Access, you know, everybody still needs the access, and it needs to happen. And I'm going to start researching and figuring out what we need to do to make sure that it happens. <laughs> Because that, like I said, we're getting desperate, and I know that Jill is in the same position. We're we're desperate, and I don't think they understand. I don't think you know the governor understands where we are. He, if it were his kid, it would be legal already. Well, no kidding. Yeah. It wouldn't even be a question. It's so it be true. A question. So true. Yep. Well, you know, I gotta say, I can't say enough. Thank you both. You know, yeah. to, to you, Jill, and and and. And and you see that like you just just for the the strength that you have, you just go out there and 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 just deal with your daily lives, but also be an advocate for other folks that don't aren't able to be out there and aren't able yep. to speak out, you know, because of whatever kind of life situation they're in. Like, thank you so much for doing that, to both of you. Because yeah, you're it, welcome. I never expected to be in this position, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, but it's it's and you're you're taking it on, and 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 it's 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 a beautiful thing, and and you know. More power to you, and and you, and I think by your action that that you're actually going to get this done, and I think that you, you know, I hope that that your your children are both going to be able to receive the opportunity to get this medicine, you know, through the the work that you you're do you're both doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we really. I don't know. <laughs> there needs to be some brainstorming, and like I said, just two days two days ago, three days ago, we're actually finding out that you know things are worse than we thought. So. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm at a loss, but I'm going to find out what we need to do. Well, I, 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 we pray for you and support you 100%. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for just for speaking out and speaking up for your kids. And uh, we also have some other people in the studio that I think want to say hello. Um, we have Holly. Hello. And we have Greg here as well. How's it going? Hi, Holly. Hi, Greg. Uh, Hi, guys. Um, uh, Thank you, uh, Mike and Frank, for having us on, and um, Jill and Cynthia um, and every other parent that might be dealing with anything uh, similar to what you are going through um, by not having access to this medicine. My heart goes out. I, I just... I. I I, my heart literally goes out to you. I, I wish that there was more that I could do. Um, this, To me, I, I don't have any children that are going through anything like this, but I've met so many patients that it's been able to help and have been able to see what it can do. And the process right now in Massachusetts, I wish I could tell you this is what you need to do. Call this person. They're going to give you the oil, and then everything's going to be okay. And it's not that cut and dry, and it's not a simple process to go through here in Mass. And I hear you, too, on, like, the whitewashed uh, answer thing, because I get so frustrated every time I hear, uh, you know, a press release from, you know, the DPH or even the governor's office. You know, it's just so frustrating to even – it's not worth even reading, you know. And, and you want more of an answer, and it's just the frustration. I can hear it in your voice. So, uh, yeah, like, I truly feel for you. But Yeah. And I, I think uh, a lot of it – the you know, the one thing I – it's not going to happen overnight, but as activists, as – advocates we have to put pl- pressure politically on the governor the governor controls the G- dph it's Absolutely. this governor and it's the next governor and they're campaigning right now so you know what, what i know about politics is the politicians will work with you the most when they're campaigning right and there's a campaign going on right now so we need to show up and embarrass them protest bring signs at these debates like when they're on television on new england cable news yeah. we should have weed signs there we should have Save Haley. I mean, this is what we need to do. Unacceptable. Continue to do protests. Like maybe the next protest, instead of being at DPH or State House, maybe it should be at their next governor's debate. Mm -hmm. Because the Democrats and Republicans aren't speaking out. Like, you know, Evan Felchuk's the only one who said, I will help these kids. I will restore caregiver service. He's the only one to address it. He's the only one to actually say what he would do, not just offer a plan. Can you believe it? I do. I do. Exactly. You know, he's a he's straight shooter. There's no reason why not to believe this guy. He he says things that are unpopular all the time. If you know, that's that's how I can. If someone's willing to be to tell you where they stand. Then they're not going to lie to you. Most politicians, the problem is they won't tell you where they stand. Right. They just don't want to answer it because they know one person will be upset. Uh-huh. For that one person, they'll be happy. One person will be upset. Right. So they say nothing and hope that both people think they're with them. Exactly. And they play the game. And and this guy's the only one who said, 
I'll restore caregiver service. I'll tell the DPH. Right. It's like part of his platform. It's, now just, it is. it's not just lip service. You know what? It was awesome yeah. when he said it because he said, it, he said, I'll do it not only because it's the right thing to do, but because it's, it's the a law. law. Yeah. Because it's the law. Right. So people voted for it. Voted for yeah. it. Two thirds of voters voted for it. Now, and he addressed both of you moms, too. He, he said that he had been following this and heard about what's going on, and he said that he wanted to help your children. I mean, that's, you know, he could tell, just like us, he was touched by it. Right. I, I just wish that uh, Baker Coakley would address this. I feel like Charlie Baker, like for all the garbage we give him, if we ha- Frank and I are going to have some Republicans in here next week, maybe. And the thing I'm going to give to him is like, why isn't your guy taking this election by making these kids the primary issue that the Democrats aren't helping out? Like Baker, you're so close, but you're going to lose again. You could win with this issue because this is a big issue. The Democrats are doing nothing. I don't know why people are so afraid to touch it. It's like the politicians are just there. It's like a hot potato. No one wants to carry it. I don't understand why. I think it's the chance someone could step up right now and be that leader. It's just lacking leadership. Yeah. That's why nothing's open yet. And that's, that's why, why Evan still can't get access. That's why Evan's doing good, because he's a leader. Yeah. yeah. You know, he, he, he wasn't looking for this. He wasn't looking to take this issue on. No. It came to him. He heard about it, and he said, wow, this you guys are right. This is, this is what you're I think. right. This is my right. opinion. Let I me mean, think about this do. and come back, Absolutely. and I'll tell you what I think. And I think that you're right. That's what yeah. he said, basically. Absolutely. And I think I think marijuana and you know the cannabis itself has been demonized over you know the past 50, 40 years, whatever. That it's it's really hard to turn people um, from becoming you know so against it to becoming supporters. Right. I think. I think the negativity um, of it is so ingrained in people's heads that I, I don't think any of the candidates want to take that on. It's you the know? reefer madness. Yeah, it's ingrained in a, a part of the public consciousness. You know, I, I do is. think that that it is the tide is starting to turn, though. And I mean, I get that sense when we're out there, like with Healthy Head, even talking to people. You know, it's like you can see. It's like the more you inform people, the more enlightened they become. Yeah, too. and everybody, it's it, coming. It's more and more of us know people like you guys, like you, Cindy, like you. You know, this is this is what we know. We know people like Cindy and Jill. We know they have kids. We we all know somebody almost at this point. Yep. And it is. It's a matter of education. I had one conversation with a guy who was so against it, and he he didn't even want to read anything about it. He didn't want to do anything that would even, you know, give him the chance to understand what it's all about. And so I set him straight with um, some facts and he turned around within probably 30 minutes and he said, I 100% support you and I'm going to vote, you know, and for, for, for this. And it's That's just, great. It's That's honestly, awesome. it's just a matter of education. And once you tell them that you have a child that is suffering without it, it that everything turns. Right. Everything Absolutely. Turns. It yeah. does. It's, it's, it's so like, you know, I, I tell my story. I think, you know, I don't like to cry. I, I know people have it much worse than me. I've told many stories of other patients. But even my, my back pain for the last 17 years, horrible. But when you look at your story with your children, both of you, Cindy, you know, it's, it's, it's Cindy and Jill that we're talking to. This is the young jerks. Um, two parents with two children. When you look at the pictures, when you tell your story, there's nothing more compelling, I don't think, in any issue. And I think that's why it goes beyond marijuana. This is a parent's issue. This is a, this is my child. This is a medicine that doesn't get that high. It's a compassion this is issue. This medicine you know, that stops suffer? them from having seizures. Yeah. Who says no to a kid? Nobody. Nobody. And that's why I don't get it. That's, it's, it's, compassion. It's, we're so far gone. Humanity. Here. 63% like, supported it. Where's yep. the governor? Where's Charlie Baker? Where's Martha Coakley? Yeah. What are they doing? Yeah. Nothing. 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 They're, they're waiting. Deval Patrick's waiting to get out of office. They're campaigning. You know, and, yeah. and and they're hoping the rest of the other, the rest of them, except for your know, Falchuk, actually would do something about it. Are just are just sitting around waiting for the DPH to figure it out and hoping that it gets done before they get into office. That's all they're doing. And every time they say they're getting it done, they fall further behind. They're like, oh yeah, we're it's gonna just fall. More lawsuits and we're just you know we're working through the process be every patient. day to make sure. I, you know, be patient. Uh-huh. There couldn't be a worse th- actually. Let me ask you both. This is a great question for both of you. Is there a worse thing that we could say to you and your children when when you're having the situation with the seizures and all of these new things that you're finding out uh, about your children than to say, be patient? Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's one of the worst things that somebody can actually say. It's 
from them to even when you're in the emergency room and they're treating your child, they can't get those drugs in her fast enough. There is the split second that, you know, turning blue and not being able to breathe. It is a matter of seconds that you need that medication. And then, you know, 10 days later, she's still you know, uh, reeling from this hangover that she's been on, but it's those seconds, and with they, I don't think they, they don't understand it. They need to be in, you know, the emergency room, to be at home when the seizures start. They need to be in the ambulance when the seizures are continuing, and then in the ambulance, you know, um, and then, you know, in the ER. They, if, if they just lived four hours of our life... <laughs> yeah, right, it would change would, overnight. If they live ten minutes, ten minutes, not they don't even four hours. You know, I know who, it, who it would, there, in too. their right mind is going to see a child suffer and then you know put barriers in between that child and being well. Right. Like who in their right mind would do that? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Ah. It's, the same, it's the same thing with even our vets. You know, our vets, my Absolutely. husband's a twenty-one year vet. Yes. They got PTSD, and the one thing that could probably help them, you know, function in life. Yeah. Right. And and it's not there. It's not yeah. available. Oh, it's even right. worse than that, too. And the VA says, you know, if you, if you get caught using it, we're going to take away your benefits. I right. mean, that's Absolutely. just insane. Yeah. Um, so we, we are talking, we, we were talking to Jill earlier. Uh, Jill, are you still on the phone, too? Oh, I think we did lose her. Yeah, we well, Jill, her. thank you for calling in. We still have Cindy on the line. And uh, two moms that, you know, an amazing stories. Fight the fight that needs yeah, to be thank you for we coming to down to this protest and, and being all out on Facebook and letting us all know about this. And thank you for telling your story and fighting for your children. Absolutely. Yes, you're welcome. Is there anything that you uh, wanted to leave everyone with today, Cindy, about the situation? Anything that you want to ask people? There's a lot of community out there that wants to support you. What, what, what do you anything that you want to ask for help? Anything? What can we do? Um, for the community to get together and to do a meeting that we can, you know, all the minds come together and tackle this together. I think it's a, um, the movement begins with a ripple, you know, and the more people that are available, the more, you know, the more they're going to hear us. So um, meetings as a part to protests, I would be willing to head that up and <laughs> go from there. I need, we need this medicine bad. <laughs> We need a bad. Thank you. And uh, do you work with uh, you work with MPAA too, Mass Patient Advocacy Alliance? I know some people got a little mad at them during this protest. Do you no. work with them? No, I don't. No. I don't. Um, like I said, I'm, we're brand new. Becky's first seizure was September of last year. I would check them out too. I know um, you know some people don't like to work with the institutional you know groups, but there's some benefit. I think working with everyone. I think. Uh, the whole community works. It's going to take all of us to get it done. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. never know yeah. where the help can come from either. Yeah. Right. Right. And we'd be happy to put you in touch with um, Mass Matt. Patient Advocacy Alliance, Matt, over there. Any other resources we may be able to um, pass along because you're new to the state? Uh, any guidance that we might be able to give? Um, Anything we can do. Happy. Happy Anything. to do so. Oh. Absolutely. I'll take it all. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much for calling okay. in. And for your work. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good night. That is Cindy. She's a mom in Massachusetts, her daughter. You heard her. She's suffering, and she doesn't have her medical marijuana, this uh, strain that doesn't even get you high, and she's got other conditions she's finding out about. And uh, we also heard from Jill that, you know, save Haley, save Haley, save Haley. Yeah. I mean, you, I saw those pictures this week and the videos, and did you see how beautiful those kids are? Uh, kids, I saw them myself. I was there, you know, and who wouldn't and, fight and, for their kid? And yeah. just like you know, there's just two awesome little girls that are just running around, and 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 um, I'm not one of them had a service dog. I'm not sure which one of them. I think it know. was uh, Jill's daughter Haley. Jill's daughter, I think Haley that was Haley. I'm pretty sure. You know, maybe I'm wrong. And, and they're, they're playing, you know, this, with the service dog, and they're, and and they're the just phone. like two beautiful regular kids, you know, yeah. just living their life, you know, and 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 part of this thing, you know, by no fault of their own, and 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 at the same time. You know, to they're too having weird. these 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 crazy issues. You What's know? weird about this whole thing, Frank? Is these kids? We got another phone call. We'll take in a second, but uh, yeah, bring the phone call on. But the the message is like these two kids, right? Their parents are basically telling them that these these bad guys that won't let them get their medicine. Can you imagine like thinking that like you, you that someone's forcing you to have these seizures basically at this young age, and then you come down to this protest, and you hear the good guys speaking up for you. Yeah. And you see them, and then when those, when that crowd started saying, save Haley, save Haley, save Haley, I saw her. 
I saw those kids. Yeah. They were playing among themselves all day, but at that moment, that child knew that there were people there for her. Absolutely, yeah. And that, it, it's just, a, you know... It's just an amazing moment, and I, I just uh, can't say it enough for everyone, this whole community that supported this. There were so many of you that stepped up last week and, and took a day off of work and went down there or promoted it or wrote about it or covered it on your radio show or did a video, put it up on your website, yep. put it up on your Facebook. Everyone was all about this thing, and we have to continue it. We have to help these kids. No, and, and like, and what do we do? You know, like Cindy was saying, like, where do we go from here? What do we plan? Like, we go keep going like, politically. Do, we keep do talking we go, about. It. We're talking about in front of the Val Patrick's what house. What are we doing every week? office. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We keep no stop. Yeah. 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 And that's one thing we said on this show is that we're going to keep doing this. And that's what was kind of good about having it two or three weeks out is that yeah. it gave us time to keep doing it, not do it just one week and have a protest. To keep doing, it. we're having every single week we're going to talk about this. We might get into other issues, but every week we're going to spend some time on this show. How can we stop talking about it until these kids? are taken care of. Yeah. Keep the pressure on. I don't care how long it takes. And that's what everyone needs to do. We need to keep going. And uh, we do have a phone call. Let's see if the the phone call's still there. We might have lost them. Uh, Caller, are you on the line? Hello. Hi, it's Jill. I'm back. I have to go because Haley had her 11th seizure of the day. I know you were asking, Cindy, what can we do? Yes. I just want to say I'm a mom, so I like kid books. I think we need to be like the Who's in Whoville. The last who is the one that makes the difference. I think everybody needs to speak up. And when we all join our voices and the last who joins in, then we'll get hurt and we'll get help. We'll get him, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. And, um, oh, my God, it breaks my heart. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for fighting. I told you you couldn't day. make me cry. No. You <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, you know, me too. I'm right here with you, you know, and and... and just, you're just, we're going to get this done for you. We're going to figure it out. We have we're to figure it out as a community. Yeah, right we have to. <laughs> we're not going to give up. No, There'll no. no. Watch no. for more. You know, and, and I think that's the next thing. I think, Frank, you know, we talked about, Jill, one thing that we want to try to do. Frank did this before. We've done it before. Where we go up to the state house. There's this game that we play sometimes. Frank and I have done it with these reps. They don't want to talk to us. They send out their aides. Oh, and sometimes the aides. we even get some progress with the aides. But we'll keep going up there and say, we want a freak. We want the meeting. We want a one on one meeting with the governor. Yeah. Well, no, right. that's the thing. It's like, let Deval Patrick sit there and, and, sit there and with offer these kids. platitudes to you and your child's face. Let him do that. Let's all you demand know? it. Let's demand yeah. let him do that meeting. Yeah. Let him sit there and, and, and keep squirm. going. Let's keep calling the governor until he agrees to meet with these three moms that we know of and any other moms that are out there. It's you know we've we talked to Jill, we talked to Lisa, we talked to Cindy. It's at least three moms that we know of. Yeah, the DPH estimates that there are 8,500 children in Massachusetts alone that cannot control their seizures on currently available treatments. So there are a lot of moms like me out there. We need to reach them. We need to find them, and we need to reach them, and we all need to band together. We right. need a Absolutely. meeting. We need this mayor, this governor to meet. Yeah. We need to keep calling them. Keep talking about Keep it. Keep showing up at the state house. He's got time to meet with lobbyists from Raytheon. <sighs> that, that's also a bunch of money. You said 8,500 Patients, I know, right? Dave? That's, that's, like, that's you, a lot. Why? Why would the? Why would Massachusetts not want to embrace eighty five hundred paying people? Well, because because there's a vested taking... money interest on the other side, right? Exactly. Yeah, and, and that, that's the government. But still, they're still going to sell that product. Right. Why don't they sell both products and make money off both of them? That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not even about the other yeah. products, though. It's about well, it's 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 the people who are against this are the health hacks. Who are like the substance abuse people, Dave? Like, like you know, just say no people that totally think marijuana. They really do. There right. are these doctors out there that convince that marijuana is evil. Like, yeah, I, know. I go to the doctor and, and they're like, "We can tell that there's marijuana in your yeah. bloodstream." I'm like, "Is that an issue?" Did I yeah. tell yeah. you then, you can right. test my marijuana? And then, and then you have a certain marijuana? you have a certain level of uh, also government lawyers and police and uh, probation and yeah, drug right. testing All companies. And in Florida right now, it's. Uh, being, you know, this guy's a multimillionaire. He's funding the opposition against us. Uh, he drug testing company. You know what I Absolutely. mean? Absolutely. This is a healthcare law enforcement cabal against marijuana, and, and it's not corporate. It's power. not. It's not Pfizer. It's government. It's these government hacks, and that's what they are. And they run the DPH, and they have a lot of power. And they 
they're out of the Mass Medical Society is one organization. One of the leaders said that uh, the Boston bombing was caused by the guy's withdrawal yeah, from marijuana. Yeah, because he was smoking weed. I mean, he had to these make a are the guys running our DPH. Then he had to make Crazy a retraction. Crazy doctors that shouldn't even be doctors, right, Frankie? Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The guy literally said that because the Sardin brothers were stoned that they killed people. Like, mm. like because he was then, no because of withdrawal. Well, oh, yeah, he no, stopped no, smoking he had, the weed. No, you're right. I'm yeah. sorry. He had All right, stopped. which is crazy. No one has withdrawal from weed. We got another phone call. Let's. We have uh, Jill on the line. We are the Young Jerks. WEMF Radio. We're fired up today. Who's on the line? Hey, it's Dan the Man. Hey, Dan the Man. You've been listening. You're the market basket, dude. You're our friend. What's What do you think about this conversation today? Well, it's. It's tough. I hate to, you know, I've been following on Facebook, listening to you guys on the radio, and I'm willing to help out in any way I can with the with the whole thing. Wow, that's big for you, because I know you're not like uh, Mr. Weed at all. No, I'm not, but I, you know, I've been helping people out since, I don't know, the beginning of the year, and I've been seeing on Facebook and listening to you guys, so I want to like, help out with the whole thing, see what I can do to help out with everyone. You know what you can do, man? You can call the governor's office, and you can tell the governor that you think that it's completely unacceptable and disgusting that, you know, little kids are being denied safe and effective medicine that will help them with a debilitating condition. That's what you can do, man. Right and you on. can encourage everybody that you know to do the same exact thing. I actually I actually know someone that works at the state house. Well, there you go. Let them know. My, my uncle is a state rep. He works at the state house. What's his name? Uh, Brian Dempsey. Well, let's give him a call. I have, I have to give his, get his number, but I have, I think I have his secretary's number, too, so I can always call his secretary. For sure. And see if I can set up an appointment to go out there and talk to Brian and maybe sit down with Brian, myself, and the governor and see what we can do to get the ball rolling on this. Thank you, Dan, the man. Because I saw the pictures and stuff from the state house. And I didn't see the governor out there on the steps or out there talking to you, talking to anybody. I didn't no. see the governor out there. He was going on job and interviews. Yeah, he won't talk is, to us. My thing is, the governor should be should at least be outside talking to these people, getting their point of view on what's going on, so he can work on it. Awesome. But I think he was, you know, in his office or doing something, but he should be, at least be outside. Talking to people and getting their side of the story to what you know what what they think about it. Thank you, Dan, the man. But I I, I don't think it was right that he was an author. He should at least be out there talking to people. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree. It's good to hear from someone like yourself uh, that's been checking it out. I know you started supporting, listening to us, you know, calling in about Market Basket, and uh, it's good to hear from someone out that's outside of us to hear what their opinion is. And uh, we appreciate, you know, make that phone call. Let, let us know. We want to hear what, what happens when you talk to your Mr. Brian Dempsey and see what he says and try to get that meeting with the governor for us. Because, you know, get we, we if you can get that meeting, we'll bring in those moms. Because, Jill, you would go in, right? Meet the governor? She's still there. Oh, we lost her again. Well, you know, we, we, we lost her several times. And, and, you know, a lot of times this is what we she has to deal with. She... Uh, her daughter has seizures, you know, so... Yeah, was, that, was, was, her, was she the one that just called before I did? Because I was just listening before I called. Yeah. Yeah, and she, there was a mother that was on the those, like, bought her eyes out, and I felt that. And I'm like, oh, my God, really? She's had, you know, her daughter had another seizure, and the governor or anyone in the city is not doing anything about this? I'm exactly. Like, hey. I'm exactly. Like, really? Yeah, we had two moms calling, and both of them were, uh, I would say, crying today. I mean, how can they not? It's... It's unacceptable. That's what we've been saying. Hashtag yeah, unacceptable. I don't know who came up with that, Mickey Martin, but that is such a good. I, look, we, I mean, Frank and I like speed round, one word answers. I, that's all it is. We, we just we don't know what to say about it, but we go back to hashtag unacceptable. Yeah. It's unacceptable. It's so clear that it's unacceptable. You yeah. know, and it's, I'm you know further than feeling like it's. Why unacceptable. isn't the rest I'm of the media the talking about this? Why is it just us, Dig Boston, WEMF Radio, Furrow? Why is it just the just, same people? You know, like okay, Fox Twenty Five went there, down there and covered it for a day. Awesome. Uh, Channel Seven went down there and covered it for a day. Mass Live. That was awesome. Fox Twenty Five is across the street. Too. Yeah. Yes. Literally across yes. the street. Yes. Exactly. You can see it. Yeah. But 
you know, and, hey, newspapers been down there covering it. Uh, like, some I mean, of them, but it's not enough. Months. They cover it for Metro. one day, and they don't really no, they cover don't it. Keep going? No, they yeah. don't keep going. They want. They don't really tell the story. The I want to yeah, see a feature. Story. I want to see the Boston Globe run a feature. You know, a three part story on the three moms every day. Exactly. They thousand stay words. With it. I mean, stay with it. Follow through. Like yeah. you know, yeah. There should, should be at least reports out there talking to the moms and interviewing the moms again. Their stories about it, so it can be in the paper. So. More people, just besides us, can see what's going on and can act on it. Not just people that are going out to the state house, you guys, and anyone else that's hearing about this. Exactly. Like, yeah. That's not enough. We need, we need to get it out there to the, you know, get it out there somehow to people who are saying, you know, this is what's going on. You know, this is, you know, this is happening to this person and this is affecting them in this way. We should get more people involved in that way. The other thing, the other, yeah, the other thing I want to ask you to do too is start promoting the links when you, you know, the, everyone out there. When you see, we post them all the time. All these stories, all these videos. Nikki Smokes did a bunch of videos. We got a bunch of pictures. We got a bunch of news stories, media coverage. When you see us post them, we we'll post them on the Young Jerks all the time. We repost that stuff. Post it everywhere mm-hmm. and uh, watch the videos. Check it out. Write comments. You know, this stuff is important, all this spreading of this information. That's what we need to continue. And invite them to the Young Jerks. If you know your friends are interested in helping out people and doing stuff like this, invite them. Give them the friend invite to our Facebook page, The Young Jerks. Everyone knows where it is now. We've been getting a lot more traffic there. Yeah. Dan the Man, thank you for calling in. we gotta, we got to move on. Thank you, Thank Dan. you so much for what you do. And Call thank the you governor. For calling Thanks, in. Call the governor. Let us know. Call your uncle. All right, Thank we are the Young Jerks. This is WEMF Radio. We went a little long, but we needed to because we had some big time things to talk about. I mean, oh, I mean, I'm fired up, super, yeah. super awesome for you know. Super thanks goes out to all the moms that called in and Dan the man, the surprise little call. That yeah, was, that, was, that was awesome. You know, I mean, and, we're showing and, it. This is how you do it. Like know? we didn't push it on Dan. No, so we were just it, who it, we he are. came around on his own. He came around on his own, <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's, that's what, what it's about. Yeah, I, I always wow. say we don't need to push it. You just be you. It's a pretty intense be, show today. Be strong. Um, yes, and we should take a break. We're gonna come right back. We'll play a little song. Um, and we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about Evan Felchuk, I think, good. his campaign and uh, talk about what we're doing next week because we're going to have another big show next week. Things are happening yep. at EMF Radio on the Young Jerks and it's campaign season and this this medical issue ain't going away. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of listeners, a lot of calls. Uh, if you want to call in, I know we couldn't get to every call, 617-500-7100. Now would be a good time to call. We are the Young Jerks. We'll be right back. EMF yes. Radio. Don't don't go. Stay Stay. Tuned. Stay. Good listener. Police across Massachusetts are cracking down on DUI with increased patrols and sobriety checkpoints. A DUI can cost you more than just your license. You may lose your job and even your freedom. I'm attorney John Seed, former Boston DUI prosecutor specializing in drunk driving defense. I can help you get your life back after a DUI arrest. My trial experience on both sides of the law is the critical factor in defending DUI cases. Don't let a DUI destroy your life. Call me, John Seed, today, 617-254-8000, or visit johnseedlaw.com. I'm Evan Falchuk, and I'm the United Independent Party candidate for governor of Massachusetts. Like most voters, I know lawmakers aren't spending our tax dollars wisely. They just came up with a billion dollars to expand the Boston Convention Center, but they tell us they can't fund what we need, like health care, education, and job training. This just doesn't make sense. Things won't change until we vote to make a change. I'm Evan Falchuk, and I believe we can start to fix things. To learn how, please visit falchuk2014.org. Paid for by Falchuk for Governor. WEMF Radio Now. There we are. That is Evan Falchuk for Governor ad that we just decided to run. Yeah. Yeah, we're running him. We like him. He's running. We're running it for him. We're the young jerks. At WEMF Radio every Saturday at 6 p.m. And we're going to talk about the campaign of Evan Falchuk. For sure, for sure. Lot, lots going on with Evan's campaign. You know, he's catching a lot of momentum right now. He's moving up in the polls. We can he feel he's it being on Facebook. kicked out of debates because he's can, so badass. He, well, you know, we can tell he's doing good. You know why? Because we're doing good. Yeah. You know, we, we feel the buzz on our show. When certain issues get big and we're covering them, and uh, he's one like I, the rest of the mainstream media pretending all oh, this guy's nothing, he's not pulling. They're a bunch of liars and jokers because you know what? You're covering them, and why are you covering them? You're, you're not. You're trying to put them down, but then you cover them again. Why? Because he's getting the eyeballs. He's getting the clicks. We're getting the clicks. We're getting. Uh, what has our social media been doing the last few Blowing weeks? Up. Yeah, Evan Felchuk and this medical marijuana thing. Both of those combined. 
Yeah. It's like the market basket thing. We were, there were certain weeks there where we were booming. We could feel it. You could feel it on the show, and that's what's happening right now for Evan Falchuk. Let's talk about uh, New England Cable News and uh, the Worcester Telegram and Gazette. They kicked them out of this debate. The best was on the, the best was when they when when uh what's his name Brody Brown. Well, that's what we're getting to. Let me get to uh, that. Uh, Let uh, me get uh, to uh, that. You're I'm jumping sorry, the gun. I'm, I'm getting excited. So this week, you know, kicked out of the New England Cable News debate, and people were upset on Facebook. People were upset on Twitter. We're hitting them up. Hitting up. I was hitting up Brody all week. I was telling him, you know what, dude, I ain't gonna listen to. He's like Brody, you had some other people coming up, like um, Ed Markey or something in debate. And I I posted right to him. I said. You know what, Jimmy? I, I ain't listening to New England Cable News. I ain't listening to your debate if you don't have Evan Felchuk on. People started posting these things, liking it, responding, going after the Telegram Gazette, going after New England Cable News. And Evan started talking about it. Yep. Evan went on New England Cable News with Jim Browdy. It's true. I, that's, and you watched this, Frankie. I did. I did. <laughs> and, w- like, they ha- this is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. They, they pretended, like, oh, you, you don't have enough support or popularity to get on New England Cable News to have this debate with Martha Coakley and Charlie Baker. Why? Because he did too well at the first debate. They invited him to the New England Cable News debate, and then they disinvite him. And now, because everyone's upset, what do they do, Frankie? Oh, they, they, you know, they, they bring him on the show, and but then at the same Who's time, show? Oh, Jim Broge, Browdy, Jim Browdy, Browdy, Browdy. Yeah. I don't know. The guy should spell his name for it phonetically. But at any rate, I digress. Who's yeah. usually all right? Usually he's cool, right? Usually I, I, Jim's I mean, I, a good I, I guy. I used to listen to the radio WTKK, show when I was on, yeah, yeah, ninety yeah. six nine before Boston whatever I, when I used to drive around. Now he's on GBH with Marjorie. He's still yeah. doing the show with Marjorie. You know? I like his show. It's not yeah, a bad no, show. The show's fine, but like the not the as good attitude, as us. The, No, certainly not. <laughs> but the attitude that he took towards Falchuk was super combative. And where, like, he was defending his dad on the playground or something. Yeah, he was like, trying right? to pin him. You know he mean? was trying to, like, it was like, it was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you because you're not uh, consistent. Like, it was like basically trying to play this game, and it was obvious what the game was, and especially towards at the end when Evan Falchuk does what he does very well. He stayed calm, he stayed collective, but he went on the offensive. He he said, hey. What are you talking about? You guys are excluding me from the debates. Yeah. This is what's actually happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a real deal, Jimmy. And Jimmy couldn't handle it. He got upset. He didn't look good in that. No, no, no. And you could see it. You know, you could totally see the, that that he was trying to come from a standpoint of like making him look bad and and, and shrugging off the fact that they just decided not to inv- that not to have him on the debate. Like, oh well, well he, you're yeah. just not good enough. And it's like, dude, you never told me I had to be good in the first place. Yeah, you yeah, just you were invited like, hey, me. You want to come over to my house and hang out? And then, and then, then all of a then sudden. Like, oh, no, you can't come over. I'm like, dude, why can't I come over to your house? Well, I don't know. You don't have a green shirt on. I don't know. You can't come over to my house. Like, I mean, that's essentially what they did. Yeah, they did. And they Stupid. said, yeah, you can't get the... Then she said, uh, when, you know, he, Evan followed up and, and said, what's the real reason? They said, oh, because you don't have 10% in the poll. He's like, well, and then, and then Jimmy, the first Jimmy Brown goes, Browdy or whatever his name is, goes from New England Cable News, the big night, you know, big, big show, all big, big guy. He goes, uh, well, you only have one or two percent of the polls, right? So, uh, why, and then... Evan goes, well, that's not quite true. I've actually been moving up, and last poll was 5.2. And what Evan didn't even bring up is that the margin of error was like 4.4 or yeah, 4.5. Yeah, yeah. So if you add that together, that's that's round that up, that's 10%. That's yeah. 9.8. That's that's 10%, dude. Yeah. He just got 10%. But then the dude goes immediately to just trying to belittle that and saying, oh, well, yeah, you know, let's say you get 2% or let's say you get 3%. Let's say the United yeah. Independent Party actually becomes a party. You so can't you, really you win. You're like, you're not really. You don't. You like, can't really win. Yeah. Win, like, win. Jim Browdy's saying that and New England Cable News is a monopoly. Come on. Come on. You're deciding the election. Who gave you the power to decide, Jimmy? If, yeah. Well, just the whole entire debate process is ridiculous. Like, now we have a Springfield debate that's just going to be Charlie Baker. Yeah, there's a story of Mass Live about that. What's the name of that? It's just Charlie Baker. One candidate debate. (laughs) Debate. (laughs) Because Martha won't show up. for an hour. She's like, oh, and not like, oh, well, maybe we should just invite Falchuk, or maybe we should invite, you know, McCormick, or maybe we should, you know... 
throw tomatoes at live. I don't know. Like maybe we should do something like and bring another candidate. No, nah, we'll just we'll just we'll just have Charlie Baker on. He'll talk for an hour. And, Solo debate. You know, people can you know he can debate himself. What, what Falchuk actually said something funny. They can set up um, a mirror. Yeah. He, he <laughs> said, uh, "What did he say?" He's like, he said that that um, what's what's Charlie Baker? Or I don't know if it was Falchuk or the Falchuk campaign, but like, what's what's Charlie Baker going to do? He's going to sit there and you know debate his fists or something like that. <laughs> like what one hand's going to debate? I don't know. The other hand. Fun. It was funny. It He's going to debate like Will yeah. Ferrell skit written his thumbs, all over like it was going to bait his thumbs. I don't know. He's going to be like, "Excuse me, honey, what was that uh, thing you sweetheart. said, sweetheart?" Like, Excuse me, sweetheart. sweetheart. And then he'd be like, "You shouldn't talk to me like that." Yeah. That's misogynist. You'd be like, "No, I mean, I wasn't really trying to say that." He'll be like, like a Monte Python all of a sudden turn to Two Face, yeah. you know, and just pour some acid on his face before I don't the thing. Know. And like, I, don't know. I mean, this is ridiculous. This, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's about as ridiculous as we're talking about it. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's ridiculous. Like. I don't want to hear a debate unless oh, Evan's involved in it for governor. It's it's it's. You're not an adult. You yeah. can't make choices. Yeah. We're gonna make them for you because super PACs give us money. You see, yeah. and when those super PACs threaten not give us money, well, geez, I don't know if we can still have you on the show. Yeah. You know. That's exactly what's happening. Old ready for you know, Martha Dem- was gonna build us a new deck this year. Don't know if we can let John. Sorry. Democrats and Republicans, they're doing that. They do not want this third-party voice in there that's strong, that has money behind them, that's saying the right things. We are almost out of time, and uh, we got to thank everyone for being on the show. Thank you, Dave Crespo, behind the board. Thanks, Dave. Thank, thank you, you, Dave. The, thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Healthy Hetty, for coming in. Thank you for yeah, having us. Be Always Holly. being awesome. Awesome. Holly and Greg. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, thank you, Kyle, man, for Kyle, man, doing our pictures over here, photos. I, you didn't even get to weigh in. He was supposed to speak up on the air today. Uh, we we had too much to do. And uh, next week, we got to talk about next yeah, week. Yeah, so we've got some pretty cool. We've got a little like a round table, a huge round table. We didn't even get to it. who are we gonna have on real quick. I know a couple people from uh, Evan Falchuk's campaign. Yeah. We're gonna have Trinidad here. Yep, Trinidad Kearney. People know her mm-hmm. from Twitter. She's one of the big campaign people. We're gonna have another gentleman from Evan Falchuk's campaign um, that you'll see in a video that Evan just posted. Uh, they're talking about the co- coffee and beef jerky. Evan and him. That's he's going to be in here next week. Yeah, and who we've, else? We've got Dan Fishman coming in also, libertarian, libertarian candidate. Um, and we're also going to be having Evan Kenny. It definitely um, it's confirmed. Uh, yep, Evan Republican Kenny All Stars coming, coming in. in. Republican All Star Evan Kenny will be here. And um, Pirate Party, Pirate Party, two, also. two members running for um, uh, U.S. state rep. We've got uh, most likely I mean, uh, Noel uh, yeah. will be gracing us and with their presence, and uh, go Joe Gerton as well, and uh, maybe a Democrat. We're going to have a whole, but basically, there's going to be a whole gang of people here. And we're going to talk about the, the elections. We're going to be talking election, about you know table. what it's like to run the for third parties. We're going to have a little third party summit. And then we're going to throw some you know old, old hacks from the Republican and the Democratic Party in there too. We'll some of them be young hacks. I don't know. At any rate, maybe that are hacks. It's going to be a big the, political the, debate next week about this governor's orgy. It's going to be good. It's going to be a political orgy. Exactly. It's going to be welcome. just a schizophrenic hodgepodge. It's going to be a cuddle puddle. Only there's going to be politics. All right. At any rate, it's going to be great. <laughs> We're going to beat you with joints. It's going to be a chair fight. <laughs> We're we will beat, we will with beat people with joints next week. Politicians, <laughs> young politicians, young politicians will be beat with joints, and it will be awesome. It will be on YouTube for your viewing pleasure.